The, for those of you who are new to, to Dragon Age, um, the basic premise of the game is that there is a huge explosion which has occurred when uh, two of the factions, the Mages and the Templars, got together to, uh, to talk about peace. Uh, that explosion caused this huge rift in the sky which is now pouring demons into the world. Um, but that's not the only chaos that's in the world. There's, there's different uh, countries that are at war, there's civil war, there's, there's factions who are corrupted and all this chaos in the world. Uh, so the game is all about the player taking on the role of the Inquisitor, creating their own character uh, and building up and forming this Inquisition. Dragon Age Inquisition uses the Frostbite 3 engine, uh, which we've mentioned in the past. And uh, when we first got the Frostbite 3 engine, um, it, it's a shooter engine basically. So we had to customize it a hell of a lot. Um, so there was no real concept of things like um, cinematic tools and, and, and aspects of the engine that, that Bioware would need to tell a story. Uh, there was no concept of things like uh, inventories, which obviously for an RPG are very important. Um, so we had to build those things and, and many, many more um, to make an RPG engine that's, that's capable of making Dragon Age Inquisition a game of this size. So, um, the team spent a lot of time doing that. Um, we used a lot of the, the visual technology of Frostbite, so it's gorgeous lighting, you know, great shadows, great visual effects. The VFX are um, by far the best of any of the Dragon Age games we've made, which is all helpful from, uh, from Frostbite. Things like displacement maps um, is, a, is a new thing that we can use in, in Inquisition as well, so um, that, that capability from Frostbite has helped us to make worlds that are far more immersive far bigger um, than the previous Dragon Age games. Uh, this is definitely the biggest Dragon Age game by a long shot. Um, it's the biggest game ever on Frostbite, again by a long shot. Um, so yeah, having, having that engine has really unlocked the ability for us to make these big open worlds, explorable areas of the, of the Dragon Age world. The water tech that we brought in for Frostbite uh, was fantastic and then we, you know, we modified it slightly to, to make it work for Inquisition. Um, waterfalls and things like that are, are gorgeous. You know, probably one of my favourite areas is um, the Fallow Mire, which is uh, we showed at Gamescom uh, a while ago, and that's this really dark, swampy kind of area, an area. Uh, whereas, where if you when you explore and if you disturb the water, you know, undead come up and they attack you and stuff like that. So yes, we did bring back the uh, tactical view from Dragon Age Origins and we brought it across all the different platforms, so PC and the consoles. Um, you know, one of the things we, we, when we started making Inquisition is we looked at uh, player feedback from, from what they loved about Dragon Age Origins, what they loved about uh, aspects from Dragon Age 2 and then vice versa, whether they liked it or didn't like it. Um, and we wanted to make Inquisition's combat matter more, so uh, each of the combat encounters should matter, you know, it should be more thoughtful and, and players should look at the combat encounters and have a think about what's the best way to approach this. So uh, the tactical uh, camera really helps strengthen that uh, idea of combat mattering. So you know the player can pull up the, the combat camera, uh, pause the game, issue commands to, to the Inquisitor and all of their followers. Um, they can advance time a little bit so they can see that tactics play out and, and whether it's effective or not they can re-strategize and things like that. Or they can jump straight into action combat and, and go through the whole thing that way. Um, I think players, um, whether they use the tactical camera or not, it's not required. Uh, it will depend on what difficulty level you play on. Uh, but also tactical camera is, we think about it almost like a pressure release valve, because every player has a different threshold about how much they can handle in combat, in real, real time combat. When we thought about adding multiplayer into Dragon Age Inquisition, one of the things that we were trying to accomplish was to let players have a way to experience the game with their friends without having to spoil the story. So, you know, if, you, if you're playing the game at night and you're going to work, you're going to school the next day, uh, it's difficult to talk about Dragon Age without spoiling the story in single player. So, multiplayer is a great way for players to experience that, um, an aspect of the story, an aspect of, of the game together and have that shared experience. So in a single player game, you're, you play the Inquisitor, so you're the person who forms the Inquisition, you, you build it up, you, know, you, you recruit factions, and you use the Inquisition to um, progress through the story and to influence the world. Um, and in the single player, you have what we call the war table. So you have 
um, all these different agents who work for you and your inquisition and you can order those agents to do different missions around the world which has a variety of different impacts um, and so then in multiplayer you take on the role of one of the agents of the inquisition um, so you can create uh, a new character from a variety of different classes um, that have their own different skills and abilities and things like that um, and when you go on a mission together with your friends what you're really doing is you're playing the role of an agent and completing a mission for the inquisition so um, the Inquisition, along with your character, the Inquisitor, um, you have three what we call specialists. So they're kind of like the sub-commanders of the Inquisition. Dragon Age Keep is the tool by which players can bring in the decisions and impacts that we've made in previous games. So if you play Dragon Age Origins, you can go into the Dragon Age Keep, which is a website, recreate uh, all of the things that you did in your original game in, in Origins, um, create your character and, and you know, say whether okay, it was a, a male warrior or a female dwarf, um, rogue, you know. Um, you can say who, uh, who sits on the throne of Ferelden, you know, did the player have a, a, a baby with Morrigan or not, uh, and, and hundreds of other decisions. So you can sell all those and, and the, the major decisions in the, key, the Dragon Age Keep are all narrated uh, with the, with uh, voice actors, there's, there's text, there's, there's big pictures and stuff like that. So it's actually a cool way for not just the fans of the original games who want to recreate their worlds uh, and bring it into Dragon Age Inquisition, but it's a really cool way for new players to get up to speed on what's happened in the previous games. Um, so then you can create those world states, bring that information into Dragon Age Inquisition when you first start the game, and that will then dynamically change the world uh, that you're going to be playing in. Uh, another really cool thing about the Dragon Age Keep is that it's platform agnostic. So you can, if you played Origin on PC and you've now got a PS4, you can now transfer that uh, information essentially across uh, to be able to play on the platform that you want to play on, which I think is really neat. What's next is uh, sleep for the Dragon <laughs> Age team. Um, you know, we've been making, uh, developing Dragon Age Inquisition for four years, so the team, uh, you know, we're, we're very close, we're basically done, there's a few more things we need to do, but uh, for the most part, we're, we're, we're done. So really right now, we're just gonna see how, how everyone likes it, um, and then we'll worry about any sort of DLC or anything like that at a later point.